Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the second in the Dorian slash Sono Luminous Eduardo Mata boxes. Now, the first one, I happen to think, was the more interesting of the two because it contained all of his Latin American music with the uh, Simon Bolivar Symphony Orchestra of Venezuela. That is really unique stuff. This is more ordinary stuff, but some of it is quite spectacular. It is not complete. It is not. There is more Dorian Sono Luminous stuff that is not in here, including concertos with Ivan Moravets and some other things that we will talk about momentarily. But in the meantime, let's at least have a, li have a listen or a look or a whatever, shall we? And see what's in here, if I can open it, because some of it's really first class. It really, really is. And it tells us uh, a lot, you know, it completes sort of the picture of of uh, Mata as, a, as an artist. And I, I enjoyed these recordings. Some of them are spectacularly recorded. They really are. Okay, disc one. Are you ready? The Rite of Spring and the Scythian Suite. Those are two sonic blockbusters. And they are very, very nicely recorded. The performances are interesting. The Rite of Spring is not the most exciting one around. The sacrificial dance doesn't go completely nuts. The Scythian Suite is quite good, quite fine. Mato was an elegant conductor. He was really, really good in like French music. He's very rhythmic. I, you don't have any problem with that aspect of it, but he tends to be a little gentler than we expect in this music. And so you just have to be prepared for that. But the sonic panorama is such that, you know, it's really a joy to listen to. It really is, even if they're not my favorite performances. Uh, you know, they're very, very, very nicely done and sensitive and serious. And I know The Rite of Spring is not a piece you, you think of sensitivity, but it is a folkloric piece. And that's sort of the feeling you come away with. I, I, I trust the interpretations. Let me put it that way. There's nothing that isn't intentional about what he's doing and legitimately intentional. And so I, I'm, I'm happy with them, even if they're not my like all-time favorite. Now, let me just go through El, El Buco. Here you get all the original notes in this booklet. I mean, lots of them. Oh, Symphony Number no. 2, or Disc Number no. 2, pardon me. Ah! Another Leningrad symphony. How many Shostakovich 7s do we need? Of course, it gets recorded because it is a sonic blockbuster, but it's a sonic blockbuster with potentially a lot of dead spots in it. It really can be quite the chore if you're not careful. And this performance is a little bit on the sluggish side, particularly in that first movement that seems to be endless. And here its en endlessness is not, is not covered up as well as it can be in some other performances. It just sounds to be a little on the slow side. The performance itself, just a little bit muted, just all taken down a notch. It's probably the least successful thing in the box. Again, it's not bad. The playing's very good. The sonics are very good, but, but um, there's too much really fabulous competition. There really is. Next, Alexander Nevsky and Shostakovich 9. Now, this Shostakovich 9 is lovely. It's lithe and lean and perky and sardonic. And the Nevsky is, a, is also very good. It's just not as powerful in like the battle on the ice and in the final, you know, apotheosis and all that, as you hear in like Claudio Abato's recording or Thomas Shippers or some of the other people who really just pulled out all the stops. You do wish Mata would sometimes let go and not, not try and he's not like, like micromanaging. I wouldn't say that. He's just not urging them on to enough hysteria in, you know, these big, big pieces. You know, when you, when you are a label like Dorian was, which was Dorian was recording these things with an audiophile reputation, you, you really want people <clears throat> to live up to the audiophile reputation. And often they do. I mean, the sound as sound is magnificent, but the performances have to be worthy of the sound. And here, they just aren't quite as impactful as they ought to be. In the Nevsky, the ninth, no problems at all. It's lovely. Now we're coming up to some, let's see, what else have we got here? Oh, yeah, some American stuff. Now, this is terrific. 
Here we go. On the Waterfront, Bernstein Suite, the Roy Harris Symphony No. 3, Copeland's Billy the Kid. Absolutely first class. Terrific performances. It's not the kind of music where you need to have, you know, ridiculous, powerful, pulverizing weight. It's, it's music that requires, well, first of all, in like the Harris, it's rather lean and contrapuntal. And in the two American pieces, again, there's a certain leanness to the sound. You want to have rhythm. It's dance music. You want to have a, a light, supple um, elegance to the, a lot of the playing. And here you get it in spades. It's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. A first-class disc. So that's disc four. Now let's see what's on disc five. Oh, here's disc five. I skipped it. Yay! Chausson, the symphony in B-flat, the Chausson symphony, and Hibert's Escal, and Hibert's Divertissement. Now, Mata was fabulous in French music. He really was. He did wonderful Ravel, for example. Really first-class Ravel um, for RCA. And, uh, you know, listening to him do all of that sort of Latin American music, which is heavily French-influenced in Spanish music and whatnot, it has that, that elegance of line and that dance-like quality that he really was very, very, very good at. And the Chausson Symphony is absolutely beautiful. What I wish they had included here, they also did a Sanson organ symphony with him that was first rate. Absolutely first rate. I think they did the Yongen Symphonia Concertante too, didn't they? Yeah, I'm almost 100% sure. I, mean, I don't know if it was in Dallas, but it's very, very good as well. And uh, boy, oh boy. This is a great rec record, a great record, first rate. And disc number six, oh yeah. Respighi, Roman Festivals, Brazilian Impressions, and the Pines of Rome. I'm so happy they didn't do the Fountains of Rome, just the two big, heavy-duty Rome things. And the Brazilian Impressions are a wonderful novelty. These are hot. This is hot stuff. This is where you've got blockbuster music and blockbuster performances. I mean, this Pines of Rome is going to blow your speakers out. So same thing with Roman festivals. It's real. These are hot. This is, this is the real deal. A big, huge orchestra, fabulously recorded. I mean, audiophile sound all the way up and down through the sonic spectrum. And it's just brilliant. So go for that. So what do we have here on the whole? We have uh, six discs. And let me just, you know, I can look on the back here too. We've got... Uh, what's the hit and miss percentage here? You've got, no well, one, two, one, two, three, really, really four full discs of really first-rate music. Two that are less good, but not never bad. Never bad, really. I mean, you may like them better than I did, but it's a wonderful set and a wonderful tribute to Eduardo Mata, and you got to have the Latin American box, but this is also worth hearing. It really is, especially for the American and French stuff and the Respighi, which is like, yes, really, really hot, hot, hot. So, uh, you know, yeah, I recommend this. I really do. Uh, you know, nothing's ever perfect, but this has is less than not quite ever perfect. Not perfect. It's, oh, let, me, let me try and say that in English. It's imperfections or blemishes are less serious than in many a similar collection. And the great stuff is great. Truly, unquestionably great. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.